Okay, um, so I wanted to talk about SAM before and particularly to say that since I had a um, what was meant to be a sort of a two minute lightning talk last year that turned into a 20 minute question and answer session, um, I'd be very interested in hearing questions from the floor, uh, questions about SAM before, about the Microsoft documentation process, although I'll be talking a bit about that at my, my, at my talk at the main conference uh, and anything else that um, you may think I might be able to answer. Um, As hopefully you all know, SAM before is aiming to be a replacement for Microsoft's Active Directory. We are slowly working through all the protocols that Microsoft's Active Directory implements and providing a free software implementation of them. So for example, for Kerberos, Microsoft changed Kerberos to add in extra functionality. We've implemented the Kerberos pack and, and some of the other things that they changed about Kerberos. Uh, Microsoft took the LDAP protocol and they did their interesting things to it. We have come up with a matching implementation of their extensions to LDAP. Uh, we have implemented the logon server that allows you know, any number of Windows computers to log on to SAM before because Active Directory is far, far more than just slap Kerberos and LDAP together. It really uh, only works because of the glue of the RPC services that are always queried as well. And SAM before is also finally a way of moving the Samba project beyond just providing an NT4 compatible domain. Because NT4 died out before, you know, year 2000 they were, you know, and, and um, it's very hard to continue to support that environment with the modern requirements of group policy and Kerberos and, and some of those other things that just aren't supported in that environment. So I've been working on Samba 4 for the last four or so years with the aim of bringing us up to that new level of compatibility that we can't stop Windows clients requiring. Uh, you know, it's, um, I'm very much a fan of having Linux on the desktop, but I'm also a realist that there will be a lot of companies where that's not going to happen. And so the, w the reason I work on SAM before is to try and provide a, a way that we can move forward and we're not locked into just running Microsoft's solution for the centre of the network. Because from the centre of the network, they dominate the rest. SAM before is also a good file server, but that's not the area I work on and I won't really be talking about it here. One of the things I've been trying to do with Samba 4 is to make life a little easier for sysadmins. Samba has a nasty reputation for being rather impossible to configure. Um, so we've been working on making provision scripts and things where you put in a few options to start with and it generates the rest. That Samba 4 should just work and I hope to shortly demo some of that doing a provision um, and having it all bring up to a real domain and be able to join a machine without needing to do you know, a pile of reading through the documentation first. It just mostly just answers some questions. So along those lines, for example, you need a particular DNS configuration to work with Active Directory. So we generate that configuration, including the extra things required to have dynamic updates from your clients. Because in Active Directory, Windows clients use the, the, their own Kerberos credentials to update DNS to point at them. Similarly, um, we have an optional open LDAP backend, which I will demo today. Um, we pre-configure that, including all the configuration required for multi-master replication with open LDAP. This is something that I've um, looked through the documentation for and not really found an easy, you know, it, it takes time to, to build the configuration. So instead of that, we know exactly how Samba needs this set up, so we pre-configure it. In the last year, uh, we have grown a few new features in SAM before. Multi-master replication is one of them. Um, the Open LDAP project has worked on their multi-master replication capability, and so we are able just to leverage that. It means that SAM before is no longer just a single server solution. So uh, I'm hoping that these are the kind of things that will allow sysadmins such as yourselves to deploy SAM before in some confidence that you're not putting a new single point of failure into your network. Our users have demonstrated that smart card logon support works. This is you know, using your a little smart card with um, uh, public key cryptography. That then talks to our Heimdall Kerberos implementation, which already implemented all the hard work. And so, um, in fact, I've barely had to do anything in SAM before to support this. Um, and users have just turned up and tried a few things and actually made that work, which was a miracle, because that never happens. Um, <laughs> we have uh, support for group policy being the, a lot of the reason why people have moved away from Samba domains and away um, to Active Directory is because Windows clients are just impossible to manage without it. We've changed our scripting language and we now use Python as a, as a scripting language throughout Samba 4 uh, in the hope that um, 
the scripts will be easier for sysadmins to work with because it's a language that a lot of you already know and are, um, are writing scripts in. And also allows us to, um, allow sysadmins that we've got both using it as a language for writing our own tools but also providing bindings that other tools can be written in. And we've also done some things. Windows has a extended another protocol called the Network Time Protocol to add a different way of checking that you are an authentic time server. Um, and so we've, um, there's a patch to the uh, ntp.org NTP server and uh, Sam before implements a server side, it's a cl it runs a little client server protocol between the two to check that the, to provide signatures onto these NTP time packets. This allows Windows clients to accept valid time from a Samba server, which otherwise, uh, Kerberos, if you can't get time right, you can't get Kerberos right because Kerberos breaks down if your time runs out of sync. And so um, what I thought I'd show you now was just basically doing a provision with Samba 4 um, and uh, showing you how, how it all starts up. And I'm also going to demo the LDAP backend. Um, I actually have two um, virtual machines set up here, uh, which I could get multi-master replication going on, but that might be stretching things a bit far. We'll just show you the basics at the moment. Helm like would do wonders. So here I've got, and I'll show you what, what script is running in a moment, a um, short provision script that uh, runs through and, and creates the configuration for, uh, for the back end. And it basically tells you when it runs uh, a few things that it's done. I'll also show you a bit of the configuration file it generates. Let's see, did that work? And schema... Yeah, we're up and going. And so all the data in this server is not is stored in the open LDAP server that we have um, hidden behind. The LDAP, open LDAP server is not intended to be used directly by clients. Um, I really should have done a slide for this, but basically it's Samba for um, a connecting pipe across a Unix domain socket and then open LDAP sitting as a process. Uh, we can then use its replication capability, but we don't generally have it listening on a standard LDAP port, and clients aren't generally told to connect to it. And so, um, for example, one of the things that that script did was it generated up uh, what a number of you may already recognise as an open LDAP configuration file. In particular, one of the things that we've done is that we've told it about the two LDAP replicas. Now, I've got, not got them working, but they've, um, all the configuration is here for it. The, um, and we also generate up, open LDAP is then able to handle things like keeping the member and member of in Active Directory, whenever you add a, a user as a member of a group, they also appear in a member of attribute to match that group. And so uh, we use OpenLDAP modules to keep these things all in line. And we also have another uh, configuration through here that um, means that um, here we keep the, uh, we tell it about the different databases that it wants to keep across multi-master replication and we generate up also uh, all the other bits and pieces for OpenLDAP. So rather than you know, make mistakes putting this together by hand, Samba generates the whole thing on its own. Uh, Samba also generates up the correct um, open LDAP compatible schema uh, so that all of the, uh, because we have to run the Active Directory schema, we actually have to replace the whole of um, you normally have a bundle of schema files that come with your installation. So Samba 4 generates up one that exactly matches the requirements of itself and then and Active Directory. 
Okay, so that's all up and going. So why don't we dare and run a domain join? So I've got this up here. I've actually got it joined to the preview to the domain just before I rebuilt it. So we're going to go and um, control panel. Uh, yeah. So remove it from the domain. Don't worry about that. Okay, X work group, you must restart, but you don't really. Not as nice. This one's doing the, it will do the join over um, by doing a net bias lookup, uh, which isn't as pretty. But um, I, I have no idea quite why it's decided to break on me. Okay, we got in anyway. One of the things that you find about Windows and Active Directory, and one of the things that we found when we were first working on these protocols, is that Windows will use a number of different domain join paths, depending on which things don't go right in your network. And when I was working for a NAS vendor, um, our testing lab was set up with DNS completely screwed. Um, everything just seemed to be wrong. But that wasn't the problem because that was the same for all the customers. Nobody could get DNS right, particularly with Active Directory. Often Active Directory would have its DNS and say the router was providing an alternate DNS, all sorts of other things. Um, so Windows is actually surprisingly tolerant of things being wrong, but it also makes it really hard to then try and f do repeatable, followable test cases and know that you know, I'm having Windows do the same thing against Samba, because it does seem to choose, things to choose to do things in different orders from time to time. Anyway, we should be able to get a domain log on. We'll see. Uh, do, 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 do. Nah, it doesn't like me. <laughs> we'll leave that for the moment. I'll just go through a few of my slides. And I might get back to that a bit later, depending on questions. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about in this talk was how Samba needs sysadmins. A lot of the things that remain to be, to be done in the SAM before project are things that we've had a lot of help from sysadmins and match the skills that system administrators have. In my experience, and I've been a sysadmin, sysadmins have uh, you know, the Perl Wrangler, Python Handler, Configuration Manager, Systems Integrator, Wireshark Sniffer. You'd be amazed how useful it is just to get a good Wireshark Sniff of a problem. Live Environment Tester. I just can't test everything in virtual machines on my laptop. It just doesn't have the the variety of environments, and you know, even the occasional programmer amongst you, I'm sure. Samba isn't just C. We've, we're now uh, branching out and trying to do as much as possible in scripting languages and things to make things more flexible. And in particular, the, the provision scripts and things, the areas that helped get us set up, and where a lot of the area where Samba needs to be extended. For example, we found that I've had patches come in which say, we just need these extra bits in the LDAP database, and then new features from Windows just appear. And so they're fairly easy to add, and I just need to know what things have to be added. 
here's some examples of, of some of the things that sysadmins have helped me out with and hopefully some ideas that um, other people in this room may be able to help out the SAM before project with. I was describing earlier that multi-master replication open LDAP is really rather painful to set up. So I got Oliver uh, Liable extended the script that, pr that generated our backend. It used to just generate a single open LDAP backend and now we generate up a multi-master one. We came across this curly one at my Russian connection. They have SAM before running in production. And it seems to be working. They've been running it since about June. And um, occasionally, they would get this message in the event log, pack validation failed. Everything seemed to still work, but the message was annoying. So the pack is the thing that Microsoft has added to Kerberos. Microsoft has added a list of groups so that Whenever you get a Kerberos ticket, you've got all the information you need to be able to log the user onto the system, be it a uh, log on for the GUI desktop or to get them into a service like a file share or, or exchange or something. But Windows XP, in a very particular situation, thinks that it needs to check the pack with the KDC. Now, those of you who've been, had anything to do with Kerberos know that if you can cause a, a machine to accept a Kerberos ticket, that basically you're hosed. You can make up any ticket you like. But for some reason, Windows doesn't quite trust some tickets. In particular, it seems to try to do a login to itself, and it detects that this could possibly be a forgery. And so it goes and checks the pack with the KDC. It's got a signature on it. But as this only seems to occur very rarely, I didn't see it in my testing. My machines stay up for a few hours as I test. This seemed to require to be up for a few days, and then it would appear. So I got the trace and I eventually was able to get enough information between the Microsoft documentation and that trace to figure out what was going on. Using the full schema, um, another <coughs> sysadmin has um, been helping me convert some of Microsoft's documentation into a format that I could actually import into Samba. And that end result's about to be integrated into our provision script when we, get, um, we finish getting rid of some errors in it. But um, it's just a little bit of Python hacking and adjusting things around. But it's work that I can then work on other things and help, um, and help debug other things rather than trying to just work on you know, string parsing in Python. Um, there's only a very small Samba development community doing the core, doing the core uh, uh, development. And so the more help I get from doing these little tasks, the more I can work on other things. And the more we can move forward and actually get this, this full Samba 4 thing working. It takes a while to discover some bugs, 28 days. So a password you know, expiry doesn't really matter when I'm reprovisioning every few hours. But because people have been out and testing SAM before and using it, they found that we had messed up some of our password expiry logic. And these kind of bugs are the, are the kind of things that then, once we get through this, even more people can then go and run SAM before and find other, you know, curlier things. But, you know, you have to get past these to start with. And some of these were discovered earlier this year as people started to really take SAM before out for a spin. This particular bug was, was really quite curly. My Russian connection would find that his machines would just stop working. It seemed to be about a month later. Now, it was cluey enough that he actually tried to put the old password that was in the database, because he was keeping good backups, back into the database on the server, and then things worked again. Which told me that it had to be something due to the password change. And this actually, the only way we were able to solve this was by when we spent a week at Microsoft, and um, we then basically uh, had their engineers going through their code to find out how this worked. And it turned out the Windows client would, after a month, go and say, I'd like to change my password. And it would use a particular call where it could specify the new password as what was meant to be a clear text string. And what it did was it then filled in that string in Windows, which is um, Windows strings are Unicode and they're normally expressed as sort of two-byte pairs, UCS2 or UTF-16. They just filled it with random crap. <laughs> On the basis that, well, we're just going to do the, you know, well, I suppose when they started, any two-byte, you know, any pair was, pro was a valid character. You didn't ever interpret it as a string. You never displayed it, so it didn't matter. But it turns out it's not treated as just random crap. It is actually interpreted into a string. And Samba couldn't convert it into a UTF-8 string because these were invalid characters. 
Sam Bradley bailed out and sent the password to the zero length string, which was probably not the best for security. <laughs> but the fix was firstly to detect that they'd sent us this invalid, uh, this invalid string, and to then go through and say, in, in, in UTF-16, there is a concept of high surrogates and low surrogates, which is due to the way that these two bytes are paired. That say whether, and, and there's these particular ranges that are invalid to be, to be used. And so Windows actually then maps these to another character which says this character is invalid. And so Samba now has a, a conversion logic that handles doing one type of password, which is an MD4 over the unmodified random crap, and then the other passwords, which are constructed by taking these, this random byte buffer, dropping the, uh, the invalid characters out of it back to this invalid character character, and then doing normal Kerberos uh, string to key functions on it. And so we now have all that, but we could only even get even somewhere near it by, being able, by having a good enough relationship with Microsoft where, where their engineers were able to tell us these are exactly the steps you need to take. Julie. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the question is, it, you know, does that actually reduce it, reduce entropy? I suspect there's still rather a lot more than if they'd stuck to just ASCII, which is what Samba and most other clients do. But uh, indeed, it's um, I mean, it's foolish to do that and to require that your that everyone else uh, has exactly the same logic for knowing which characters are invalid. And I would hate for there to be at some later point some update to the Unicode specification they use, and to change which characters they. Uh, that they, they consider invalid because that would just be an absolute nightmare. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's the kind of thing that happens when you have a single... Microsoft would never have noticed this. It just would have gone through the same routines in the clients and servers of all of Microsoft pro Microsoft's products. This was never in any of their documentation. I don't think they even thought it existed until we started you know, bugging them about it. They are required to provide us with correct documentation. They have done so, but um, this one did require quite a bit of digging. Another thing that I did at the behest of uh, some of my sysadmin friends was implemented the NTP signing protocol. So when Microsoft introduced Active Directory, they did um, some work to make NTP secure for them. They didn't like the existing protocols that were used for NTP security, uh, so they invented their own. And it was tied to Active Directory. And what it does is it uses the machine account's password. And... Um, so without it, Windows clients will try repeatedly but will not successfully take time from the domain controller. So we needed to implement the Microsoft-only extensions. To say the NTP community was not happy with this would be an understatement, but I, have, I understand that they will be accepting the patch, provided it's if deft out and not in the default build. Um, and so hopefully sometime soon, distributions will be able to carry a version of NTP that will know uh, that if you put the right configuration option, we'll know how to talk to Sam before and then be able to send back these correctly signed packets and keep Windows on correct time. But we still need a lot of help. I haven't yet, haven't recently tested out Microsoft Exchange with Sam before. There's no doubt a lot of work to be done, but I haven't tried it. That's the kind of thing, testing bits of software. There are millions of pieces of systems management software out there that people run at various sites. I don't have those bits of software, most of them are proprietary. Letting me know what things work and what things just don't is incredibly valuable. Sometimes it's just a matter that they're treating LDAP in a slightly different way. We only have a little bit of work to do to fix it, but unless I know it's a task to be done, then we won't really get there. There are administration tools that we need, just simple Python scripts that do just a little bit more. These things... Um, I hope will make sysadmins' lives easier, but I also hope that some sysadmins can help us build that. I don't know whether this is the audience to be looking for a web interface to Samba for, but if that's something people want, then it's something that the community will probably need to step up to the plate. Uh, we realise in the Samba team that we just don't have the resources to be web programmers as well. Uh, these, we've had these efforts start a number of times and just, we've had, uh, just be removed because we just can't seem to keep you know, we would break it and nobody would fix it. No one even would notice it. And so um, it seemed to be not the right place to be expending our energies. The final big question that I wanted to 
a bit of help with and, and some understanding from sysadmins, SAMBA 4 implements effectively its own LDAP server. Even when we use OpenLDAP as a backend, it may as well be our own LDAP server because the schema is completely different. How much does that matter? Is that something where you're fine to have SAMBA 4 be just as bad as Active Directory, the LDAP server on its own with its own way of doing things? Or does it need to integrate into a corporate standard central directory? And if it does, what are we gonna, how are we going to do this? What mappings should we use? What, um, how should we both store the Active Directory data and the data that Linux clients will want in the same directory? There are products out there, both free and commercial, that do the meta directory problem. Is that the right way to solve it? And what mappings will we put into that product, even if that was what we were going to use? So one of the things I'm hoping that perhaps the system administrator community who knows what their LDAP servers are like and what they're willing to tolerate and not might be able to help me come up with, with correct mappings. It's possible that we could do a Samba 3 like minimal mapping where we just try and add a few extra attributes, but I don't think it will work well for, the, for a lot of Windows uh, things. I suspect you wouldn't get group policy. It might be a way of just getting Kerberos added on to effectively Samba 3 like domains. Um, or do we try and shoehorn the full Active Directory schema into a normal LDAP server and somehow still keep it as something like a normal LDAP server? Uh, I haven't spent much time on this problem. I've just known it, I've seen it as the big problem in the corner that I haven't yet worked on. And um, I'd like to perhaps someone who's um, really got an interest in the outcome to, to work with me to help develop that. I want to give you a little bit of a peek of where I think the road ahead is going with Sam before. Uh, I've been asked by my company, I work for Red Hat, to look at domain trusts. And so that's an area that we hopefully will be researching in the next little while. Uh, I've had some reports of, of limited success with this already. We've managed to uh, get an external trust to come up against SAM before. And um, we're looking at doing interforest trusts. We're hoping this is a way that people can introduce a little bit of SAM before into an organisation without necessarily having to bring in full being parent-child things where a lot of data is replicated. Uh, we're also working, going to work on replication. It's pretty clear that we, if you're going to introduce SAM before into some organisations that you're going to need a migration process in and that better not be rejoin all the machines and re ask everyone to change their passwords. So a once-off replication and potentially read-only copies where we ask Windows to keep telling us when things change and so we can keep a SAM before copy perhaps at a site where you don't want to run act of the full Active Directory but you'd, uh, you'd like to have a local server. These are some things that we've got the technology for, but we haven't yet implemented. So these are things you might see in SAM before in the, in the next year. Read-write replication is certainly possible. We've got all the documentation that should allow us to do that, but um, we're not necessarily there. And we need um, a bit of an idea whether that's something people even want. So, um, But we've taken it all in our, in our stride. We've, uh, we've progressed along quite well, I think, in the last year. Um, I've been trying, for the, the small number of sysadmins who put this into production, I've been trying to give them a hand when things come up. Um, I don't want people to feel that they're entirely on their own if they make the leap to running SAM before because I get so much out of the experience of people running in their SAM before domains. And we're starting to get the uh, small community. People are starting to answer questions when they're not just me, which is nice because I'm not here all the time and it's... Um, so we get starting to get a small community around SAM before, and I'm hoping the next year that will really grow. I'm hoping at this conference to make a release of SAM before and next SAM before Alpha, because they haven't done for, so for quite a while. And um, I'm hoping that people here can take that release and, and just give it a shot. I, I really want to know, not I've switched to SAM before, you know, everything's fine, as much as I haven't been able to, these are the things that are blocking me because I gave it a serious shot. Uh, those kind of things will let me know what areas need to be priorities in development because sometimes it's really silly things that we can get done fairly quickly. But without that knowledge of what isn't working for me, it's, just, it's a challenge just to keep on going a vague path of, well, everything in Active Directory. Um, I already did the demo, so what I was hoping for was for a few questions from the floor. Are there any questions?
Hi. Um, one of the problems that I've noticed even with, with Windows is if you're, if, let's say, company acquisition or something like that, you end up having two completely separate domains and neither one wants to b uh, budge, um, either in Samba or in Windows. How do they resolve that without bloodshed? Um, I, I, don't th I don't think Samba will provide much more of a solution to that than Windows would because we're tied a lot to the, the same protocols. Um, w Microsoft has got some ideas on you know, renaming domains and things, but if no one wants to budge on losing their infrastructure, I, I can't see where Samba 4 would be able to make a, a, a magical difference to it. Um, just because the protocols don't really allow us a lot of flexibility, Windows clients are, are, are fairly um, stubborn. Um, they will allow a little bit of renaming, but not. Um, I don't. I don't. I couldn't imagine a a great solution for you off the top of my head. But I, I agree, it's a challenge. Uh, other questions? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You mentioned GPOs. One of the. You mentioned um, group policy objects. How does Samba internally store them, and is there a good way to revision control them in Samba? So the, the question was about group policy objects and how they work with Samba. Samba, group policy we found to be uh, basically dumb. It's driven from the clients. Samba just has to store blobs. So you could revision control them in your file system on the server but, and potentially try and, there's, very, there's a little bit of glue in LDAP but basically it's registry files in the file system and these are then interpreted on the client. So. Um, you probably would store them that way. Uh, Samba is starting to know the registry file format, so you could potentially dump it out into something a bit more text-based that revision control would do a sensible thing to. Although I wouldn't fancy editing that again to put it back together, but you might be able to do a decent rollback. Um, but I could certainly imagine a, a solution where you were to put it all, uh, have, have an automatic dump into a text format and sort of have a little bit of an idea what changed. So yeah, so it, that would allow allow tracking of changes quite well. Uh, if you if Samba 4's uh, registry reading tools would just put it all out into text-based registry format, that would give you a bit of an idea what changed. And that, those tools exist now. I suspect you could run them against the group policy files in your Active Directory domain uh, as is. Um, certainly have a look, and if that's if if we can't f finish parsing those files, then we know enough about the file formats that we should be able to do it in future. What about revision control of everything in Samba, all, all the file sharing? Is there, is Samba, can Samba deal well with a full revision controlled file system? More than just snapshots. Yeah, well, uh, snapshots is something Samba 4 would, um, can handle quite well. Samba 3 even handles quite well. Uh, we know how to present the files in the file system in the way Microsoft's uh, sort of, they've got a little wayback machine they can, you can see on a file system where if you go to a particular type, a directory of a particular date format and you expose the right ioctals over the network, it knows, ah, there is the, the file at this date. Uh, so Samba can deal with that fairly well. Um, I'm not sure whether it's, um, in terms of running on a, f I, I don't know much about full revision control file systems. Um, but in terms, if you're able to make your file system expose the, the past in terms of dated directories, then Samba can actually expose that to clients fairly well. Um, and so some people are using that, less people than, than should. It's a, it looks like a darn useful feature for avoiding calls to help desk about backups. Uh, other questions? Do you have an idea when the final version might be released for general production? Um, Samba for releases, the perennial question. Um, <laughs> We don't really have an idea, partly because we don't really know how much people need. Um, as I say, we've got some people running the current alphas in production and we've got a bit of an idea what people might uh, require for a beta. Uh, but it's sort of, I want to get a feeling from sysadmins as to what they're comfortable with. You know, this level of functionality is good enough and we should make a release. Uh, Samba unfortunately has a very high bar for putting releases out because people really expect our releases to be very solid. We think the code is quite solid but we know that there are big gaps in the functionality and um, whenever I suggest just doing a release of Samba 4 just to say it's released everyone else screams, uh, it's not ready yet, there's all these things we don't do yet. So um, and in particular trying to make a release of a product called Samba version 4, um, we would have a bit of a challenge with 
we don't yet implement all the things that Samba 3 does. It's taken a different development course. Um, so there's some challenges. We may end up making a release under a different name or some other way of, of, of indicating this is the Active Directory functionality uh, because that stuff's fairly solid. Um, but some feedback from what sysadmins need would be, would be useful there and help us decide what path to take in terms of making actual sort of releases. Uh, in the meantime, we've, which we've putting out the alpha releases when I can. Um, the last one's del been delayed longer than I'd hope. Um, but every th we're trying every three months to put out an alpha release. Uh, I just want, uh, wanted to ask you more of what, where you were asking about help with the uh, LDAP uh, schemas. You're talking, th th there's the uh, Microsoft uh, De declared, if you like, uh, schema translated to be used by OpenLDAP. And uh, that has a great disconnect from, uh, say, the, um, the schema, the POSIX schemas used in uh, authenticating Linux clients. Is, and and you're, you're asking for help with getting those, marrying those two together? Yeah, pretty much. The, the disconnect. Um Microsoft just uses some, um, they, they sort of took the, stand, the, the X500 schema a bit in a slightly different directory to the way, different direction to the way that the Linux community did. Um, they don't, for example, some of the stuff is trivial, like we use UID um, to, for U Unix usernames, they use SAM account name and, and common name and things. Uh, so some of that's trivial. We know those mappings, are, we've got a, an engine that can do those mappings quite well. Um, other things are like we would use a, an account, and POSIX account, that doesn't even exist on the, the Windows side. Um, they would normally have everything as an, ex is, is an extension of user and person. Um, in fact, every computer is a person in the Windows, um, in the Windows world. And um, so these are, they're, just, they're just done just differently enough. Um, and it's, just a, it's a nice task that doesn't really require too much Samba knowledge, but mostly sit down and figure out some equivalencies and just where the big gaping problems are and just to map that out. And maybe we can, maybe we can come up with some simple mappings. Maybe there's some things that are a bit more complex, but it's, it's sort of work to be done. And if that's something that, that interests you, then I'd really appreciate some help. Uh, other questions? Um, if we have an application which talks LDAP to Windows now, will we be able to talk LDAP to Samba 4? That's certainly the hope, and if it doesn't work, I want to know about it. Because um, LDAP, we, you know, Microsoft's extensions there are not too weird, and we understand, and fortunately all of Microsoft's extensions to everything are, in theory, documented, in practice, reasonably documented. Um, so, yeah, if you've got an application that talks to, to Microsoft's AD and doesn't work with Sam before, then, yeah, I'd like to know about it and get an idea what doesn't work. Yeah, talking LDAP is exactly what, um, what we provide out to Windows clients as well. So that's, uh, so it should work, and if it doesn't, it's a bug. Okay, other questions? Um, you were just saying it sounds like it, it's reasonably stable, except it's just lacking features. So if you're saying, um, if all the features are there we're after, you're saying we should be using in production, or it's not even at that stage yet? Um, I think uh, in terms of running SAM before in production, it really is just uh, how confident you are with being able to... Um, I, I've got sites running in production. I'd like to see other sites running it there. And it's just your, your, what, your, what, what you are comfortable with and what you're able to help me with development on. You may be, when something breaks, you'll probably be asked to upgrade to some random Git revision um, and, you know, to fix things. And you know, it's just your comfort with being able to, to handle that, that change process. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you're comfortable with that, then I think that uh, SAM before is actually ready for running in small networks. And uh, it's, you know, the site that I have running in Russia, um, those problems they put up are the only problems they've had. Uh, they've got some other things they want to do with their parent company, wanting some more extra features, but for the things that they're using at the moment, it works for them. And so for, um, if that's what you need, you know, once it's up and going, you really shouldn't see too many big gotchas. And uh, hopefully some extra features over, over Samba 4. I think it's in a better shape for some environments than Samba 3 is because, as a domain controller because those extra features are required. So, um, yeah, other questions?
authenticating non-Windows machines. What's the status with that so far? Yeah, so um, authenticating non-Windows machines, we're hoping to basically do that with uh, Samba 3's Winbind. I've been doing a lot of work to make that uh, work with Samba 4. There were, again, it was rather funny, Samba 3 not working with Samba 4, but there were features that they were using that we didn't have yet. So um, I've been implementing that recently. So that's the main approach. Um, NSSL app and Kerberos should work eventually, but we've not done as much work on, on testing that kind of thing. And I just, I just don't like that as a solution. It doesn't, doesn't understand the whole of the Active Directory problem. Um, so that, that's the basic approach at the moment, is to run WinBind on those machines, which I realise is a very much you know, sending everything the Windows way, uh, but that's, it seems to be the best option at the moment. Other questions? Oh, perhaps ask and I'll repeat it. So the question was about Mac OS clients. Um, they should work against Samba 4 as is. Um, in fact, I did some, I, I haven't tested it recently, but in fact, last time I tested it, it fell apart, but that was Samba bugs. Um, they, um, their, their clients have worked in the past and should, and should continue to work using their native connector that they've got for Active Directory, which just does LDAP calls. Uh, LDAP and Kerberos calls is all they put together to make their, their AD um, client work. So that, that's, that's quite easy to support and, and should generally work. Yep. The same before an Intel MV2, that should work perfectly. We've understood Intel MV2 for a number of years. Um, and Samba 4 and Samba 3 both uh, handle all the variations that I've come across. Um, there are some they, they have, yeah, there have, there's more than one different way to, to, to put some of the fields together. You've got to test a few things, but it, as far as I know, that all works. And that code's been uh, just brought across from Samba 3 where that was just working for many years. Uh, So uh, what things might you use Samba 3 for? Well, a print server, for example. Uh, Samba 4 just doesn't have any of the spool SS code or any of that at the moment. That doesn't mean we can't port it across from Samba 3 or build it anew now that we actually understand it. Um, there are specifications and things now that just weren't available when that code was first done and um, Jerry sent bonkers. Um, it, <laughs> this, this printing in Windows is absolutely insane. Um, Anyway, the, um, so print server is the big thing that, that you might use the Samba 3 for, server for. If you've got particular requirements on how your file server works, you're using some of the VFS modules from Samba 3 to do particular quirky things, uh, then a Samba 3 file server may be just a more trusted route that you understand. And because you can use Samba 4's WinBind to link it to Samba, Samba 3's WinBind to link it to Samba 4, then you can just take that route uh, without sort of worrying about changing that part of your infrastructure. So could you just use IPP? I think there is still a big difference between Windows printing and IPP. There seems to be a lot that Windows printing does that's more than just sort of send the job. A lot of it's the, the complexity in printing is the driver download. And so um, sending the job away is the easy part. It's getting the correct drivers to each computer for each version of Windows and things. And all of that work, Samba 3 does very well. And I wouldn't wish to... Um, just send you back to, to using IPP and losing some of that functionality, which is very useful. Other questions? Yes, yeah, you, you can use the same tools. Um, so, for example, that brings me up to the other bit of the demo I didn't quite get to. Oh, I didn't get to log in, that's why. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what broke with DNS, but... Um, so, yeah, MMC works, and I was intending to demo that earlier. Um, worked in my laptop uh, when I, before I suspended my laptop. <laughs> so, MMC works, the group policy tool in there works. So those things should, uh, should just work, and if, they're, if they don't, then that's a bug in Samba that we hope to fix. Um, you shouldn't have to resort to the command line tools, although they're very useful. Um, another part of Samba 4, we've got tools like LDB Edit that allow you to use Emacs or Vi on, a, um, on an LDAP tree, a bit like uh, LDAP Vi. But um, we, um, 
those tools are very useful for Unix sysadmins and for the Windows side, we hope to fully support Microsoft's tools. Have, have I seen Samba integration into CF Engine and Puppet and things? I, it's not an area I've followed in recent years, so I, I don't really know. Um, we're, we're certainly hoping that things like our provision scripts will be things that other tools can then just quickly script to, to roll things out, uh, but it's not something I've actually looked at. Uh, <laughs> what kind of dodgy things has Windows done? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Certainly, um, finding out about their, their different way of doing um, doing NTP signing and. So you need a key identifier so you can figure out which key at the other end to, to send the signature back with. So NTP, it's a good network protocol, so it uses network byte order for everything, not Windows. They decide to see the, send the key in little endian. You know, little things like that are just annoying. Um, there are other things, what they've... Um, other things are just, you know, you, you just come across it. It's whether, it, whether it's dodgy or not. That one seemed particularly egregious. Um, yeah, it's not it's not too bad, but I've been at this a long time, so my my, my level of you know what what I what I consider weird is you know has gone down over the years. Uh, is it possible or practical to have like that on servers that uh, totally without proxy mode, or maybe get rid of the proxy mode stuff to have the can, can the patch TCP talk to a remote? Can, can, can the patched NTP server talk to a remote AD? Not at the moment. We require, um, it just uses Unix domain socket protocol. Uh, you wouldn't want to. Currently the code does blocking calls to Samba and NTP blocking, that really doesn't do good things for your time. Um, so, but I don't see any reason why, would you why you would want to because Windows clients talk to the domain controller and they expect that the NTP server is the domain controller. So there's no, there's no advantage to trying to to, what you do is you make you put a, a patched NTPD on your domain controller with Samba, and then you direct it against your other uh, other servers. Windows clients don't need hyper accurate time; they just need it within five minutes. Um, after five minutes, your Kerberos goes to mush. But um, there's there's no no real need to try and do it on some other on some other device. Up the back corner. Yeah, could, could I use a, a sort of meta directory LDAP proxy to, to see the right type of schema from Samba's perspective, but having something else at the back end? That's exactly what I'm talking about, someone implementing. Um, I've been pointed at Penrose as one tool that might do that. I've never used it. I've just uh, been asked to, to look at it someday. Um, that's exactly the kind of thing that we, we need, and it's the kind of thing that Samba 4 has set up. As long as it sees the right schema, it doesn't care. Uh, the challenge is it's not just sort of filtering some attributes, it's also just different object classes and things. So they would also need to be filtered and munged. But um, that's exactly the kind of thing. Uh, and if you're willing to, for example, only read the Samba 4 server and not generally be writing to it with admin tools, then you can get away with more because you can just be a lot more dodgy about providing a view that it really isn't right backable. Um, so that's, that's another option if you did all your administration generally through Unix tools. Um, then I think you can probably be a bit more sloppy. Uh, which can be useful when trying to do mapping of things. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly the approach. I just haven't investigated very much. What's the, sta what's the status of Samba 4 documentation? Uh, 
nil. Uh, we, we have a small how-to which goes through a bit of the how to get it up, but we haven't written large, large amounts of documentation and it would be very useful for somebody with talents in that area to start trying to document up a little bit of how a sand before domain works. Um, we generally tried to make the scripts a bit easier to eliminate the need for documentation of um, you know, having to put together complex config files before you start, but we really do need a lot of help in that area and it's not an area that the developers are likely to pick up on their own uh, just due to time constraints. So. <laughs> uh, so, is it, was the question that what is the way to, the best way to kind of integrate, you know, given a Samba 4 domain server, what's the best way of integrating um, Linux clients? Yeah, the yeah. That, that, the, the, the question was, uh, that we were talking about before was, if you've got thing, you know, things that aren't Windows, what, what, and you've got SAM before you, decide on that as your central directory solution, well, what are you going to do with your Unix clients? And the solution that I can offer you at the moment is that you run SAMBA 3's WinBind on those clients and point it at what it thinks is Active Directory and is actually SAM before, therefore providing a single directory to both sets of clients. Now, that's not the ideal solution. There are other... Um, because it would really be nice just to be using real uh, U Linux and Unix tools to to something else that was perhaps you know, connected via a meta directory or something so that it was all pure Unix on one side and only this Windows stuff for that evil Windows thing. But it's not something I can really offer or suggest at the moment. So um, the suggestion is to run Samba 3's WinBind for Linux clients in a Samba 4 domain. Okay. Julian. So what about upgrading my existing LBAP backend in Samba 4 domain? Upgrades. That's certainly a challenge. Um, we have attempted to run some upgrade scripts in the past. There is no reason why it can't be done. Windows clients expect upgrades from NT4 domains to Active Directory. The attributes that Samba 3 use are well known and we have an upgrade script that has attempted to do that in the past. But what we haven't really done is much testing of that. It would be a matter of basically dumping out the existing LDAP server, uh, importing particularly the password attributes to get those right. Um, probably then the sysadmin fixing things up um, for the th for th so the non-password attributes and then we could load that into the SAM before server. Um, so there's a process that you could go through, it's not particularly automated at the moment. Um, particularly for LDAP backends, we had some, have some scripts which are still running in, in the tests but I haven't used them otherwise that will do it from simple SMB password files and TDBs uh, because they're all the, data all the data's in the flat file that we can just read. Uh, but that's sort of how it would go. Um, question at the back. Should, is, is, is there, so the question is, is there, is there a chance of doing a SAM before AD 1.0 release uh, just so that it's not, not, not branded as, as alpha software uh, all, all over the, the boss's network? Yeah, that, um, in the same, there has been an effort in the past, SAM before has already been released uh, as, a, as SAM before wins, which ran just a replicating win server. There was a project that CERNET did. Um, anyone, any of you who've got uh, Ubuntu or Debian on your laptops probably already have SAM before bundled deeply inside a package called Python WMI. We found out about this after it was in Debian for a while um, and somebody asked us a question about it. It turns out that somebody took out the code that we took on the code that, uh, that we'd written for DCOM, extended it to be a WMI client and um, put it into Debian, you can only get to the, to the Python interface, all the rest of it's hidden in this uberly large um, shared object. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Samba 4 is already in there. Um, <laughs> uh, did they push it back? No, we had to go and find it. Uh, we, well, I mean, and you know, things are being worked, but it, for some reason they never actually talked to us about the WMI extension. Um, Yelma uh, Vinoy, who's my partner in crime on Samba 4 and uh, has been doing a lot of work in that area, um, did the DCOM code, has been...